just as I released a video yesterday thanking all of you for your support to the channel, our subscribers literally doubled from 15 to 30 and then reached 31. I think it's at 32 now. So to celebrate this, I went ahead and worked on another episode of Off Camera Secrets for Majora's Mask. First things first though, one Reddit user wanted to know how to access these cutscenes. And my simple answer is it's not a debug meter, it's actually a cheat engine. Um, to start this episode out, I'm going to give all of you a quick rundown on how to get this working. So have cheat engine ready to hack and Majora's Mask at this segment of the game. The first value you want to scan for is zero. Then walk up to this closet to trigger this cutscene. This cutscene is pretty short, so you might want to pause it by pressing F2. You're going to want to scan for this really long value. I'll leave it in the description below so you can just copy it. Uh, once you have the code that we're looking for, just add 1200 to the value that it's currently at and it will let you slip out of the cutscene. Sometimes it's not always 1200, but 1200 seems to work really well. So now that we have our cheats ready, let's begin with our first discovery and that is the Gibdo Dad. So normally you play the song of healing and a cutscene shows the dad turn back into normal. If we slip out after this cutscene starts, we can see that both states of the father exist at the same time before they swap over. However, the Gibdo father only attacks you. Next up, we have the Skull Kid. At a certain point in the game, we're introduced to how the fairies and the Skull Kid met. Well, if we pause it and become playable during the cutscene, it immediately spawns this gravitational pull that sucks your character into the walls. If we play as the Deku, then the game just won't let us run at all. Getting into this log, we can now take a new look at the Skull Kid without his mask, and for some reason having this scene frozen lets us see outside camera angles when Link begins to switch masks. Here's what they look like. Next up, we have the scene that plays after healing the Zora's soul. This scene is a very deep scene between the guitarist Zora and his lover, and slipping out of this scene immediately puts us next to the pianist Zora. If you begin to talk to him, he rants his usual dialogue about fans not being able to disturb him, but when you walk away from him, not only does the music begin to change, but we also see a duplicate set of band members, along with two other Zoras. We can also see a copy of the bassist for the band here in the back. I think they did this to help stereo certain rooms. When you're on this side, you can hear the music from the pianist, but getting closer this way changes the music to the dramatic sequence music. The crazy part is we don't hear this tune in this cutscene, so it was either used for another cutscene, or it's an idea that never got utilized. Next, here we are with the Goron's intro segment. When we slide into this cutscene, we can start on a higher plane than the Gorons below us, and we can catch a different angle of the Gorons' tears, which reveal that no matter which angle we choose, the tears just stray to the right, and we can even see where they end. Lastly, I have something really interesting. So, I slipped into the cutscene where the Gibdos go back into the ground. I just wanted to roam around it, and it's cool lighting, and I've done a video about the lighting before. So, anyways. The Gibdos don't have any collision, and they just stay in the same animation that they were frozen in. After that, I stood at this cliff, and my eye caught something. I started to think I was crazy, but in the distance, you can see these splash graphics popping up, insinuating that there's water up there in the air, and there's something moving around in it. At first, I thought it could have been a graphics error with the emulator. Maybe it was mirroring Link's steps in the waters, and the emulator was accidentally displaying a duplicate version of them way off in the distance. But even as I stood still, the steps were still appearing, and there's great distance between the steps, so it couldn't be a Gibdo's steps. The only theory I have left is maybe since the Gibdo's didn't have any collision, maybe the developers stored the graphics for their feet touching the water over here in the distance. There's something out there, and I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of time with Majora's Masks now figuring this one out. So, that was today's video. I'm so glad with how everything's been turning out, I really am. So far we've got 32 subscribers, which is great performance for a YouTuber's first month on here. If you haven't already, go ahead and join the fun by subscribing to this channel. Uh, I tried slipping into the boss level cutscenes, but there wasn't much to see there, so I might spice together a bonus clip of those once I finish the next video. But, all in all, stay safe and take it easy.